Hi, and welcome to Faith, Art, and Tiny Houses. I'm your host, Carmen Shank. Hi, everybody. So one of the things I think has been kind of interesting about the virus and the way people have responded has been this whole idea of retail arbitrage, which is when you go buy something and then you resell it online for a lot more than you paid for it. And so people would find something at Target for a dollar and sell it on Facebook Marketplace for 10 or uh, eBay or wherever. And um or go to the store and buy up all the toilet paper and then try to sell it on eBay for $200 or something like that. And that Mm -hmm. became instantly kind of a hated thing. (laughs) But what I think is really kind of intriguing is that for um, many years, um, there's this old quote, how do you make money? And Mr. McCormick said, you buy it by the ton and sell it by the ounce. And I have a little container of McCormick cream of tartar. And so quite literally buying it by the ton and selling it one ounce at a time um, is part of what has been the American way. So then turns around and somebody does retail arbitrage and it gets this big public backlash. I think that's really intriguing because it's really not that different than (laughs) some of the things that we've been that have been a part of the American economy for a very long time. Yeah, but I think the other side of thriftiness and and um, deliberately working towards owning less and um, and being more conscious of the stuff that we do own, the other side of that is hoarding and going and gathering up as much as you can because there's this fear yeah. of being alone and without. And I think that may have been part of the whole um, the whole story for folks who lived through the depression and people who lived through the world wars and who experienced trauma around not having enough stuff yeah. that it may have that trauma may have come back in mm-hmm. a, in this kind of hoarding mentality. And it's kind of an interesting life. I mean, that like that happens. Um, and it, to me, it says that person has been a victim of something already. And that's yeah. a sad thing. I, I wouldn't want to say, you know, <laughs> you need to give up all your stuff because I understand that hoarding is, is a trauma behavior. There's and a certain it's... security found uh, or I- implied in, in the things. Yeah. 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 So part of releasing the things we have too much of is addressing the fear and addressing the trauma. And I think that's a that's a way to explore living more frugally so that instead of using your resources to grab hold and keep hold of more than you need, um, it frees you to use your resources for only what you need and to not buy the rest. And that's uh, that's liberating, I think. Uh, how can you uh, how can you learn that you might have that fear within you you know instead if of if you look around and you've got a lot of something an unusual amount yeah an like, unusual amount like lumber like lumber car parts car parts i don't know who are we talking about right now pencils <laughs> pencils <laughs> i don't know why he's mentioning pencils ah! <laughs> i don't know why he would say such a thing <laughs> it just seems petty ah! <laughs> and the associated water glasses that come with it no wonder i'm looking for a glass i can't find one where where are all the glasses yes. where have all the glasses gone um, <laughs> colored pencils everyone yes. <laughs> when will we ever learn <laughs> yeah but like you know, oh, this is a good story. Yes. Yeah. There are tons of travel cups out there and everybody comes out with their own designs and different kinds of lids, different different materials for lids, you know, di- disposable, like your, you know, favorite coffee shop paper cup or mm-hmm. wax paper cup or what, whatever. Um, God forbid styrofoam. Yes. Mm-hmm. And other things. And also to semi-disposable. So it costs a few dollars, but it doesn't really matter if you leave it behind somewhere. And then, yeah, one day, nearly a year ago, we were at a tiny house show and Carmen went off 
and she came back with those two mugs, you know, and I just looked at her. What do we need another mug for? No, you know, we had but we had downsized was, to two mugs. Yes, and then one of them accidentally got broken. That's right. It so fell it in my genuinely time to. Yes, buy. it fell in my shop. Ouch! And I felt so bad because and it was one of Tom's cup. He really, he honestly tried to glue it back together. I don't know if you've ever tried to put coffee in a cup that has been glued back. Just no. It pees no. off to the side. <laughs> it was an incontinent coffee mug. That's right. Yeah, you and better so be quick. And so we replaced it with these handmade things. They are from mm -hmm. Swell Ceramics. They yes. are swell indeed. And yeah. it's it's a great travel mug because it's got this wide base, which means it's not um you can actually corner the the truck pretty hard and it still stays on, you know, yeah. solid. Yeah, I don't footing. In, in my old ranger, I don't have a, a cup holder, whatever, because it's nineteen ninety or whatever. And uh I just stand this thing onto the transmission tunnel into the carpet, you know, poop, and it just sits there. It does. You know, I mean, you don't drive and like a race uh, driver. So, yeah, sometimes there are two. <laughs> and the coffee stays in, doesn't come out, and blah, blah, blah. And it's amazing. And literally, we will take these in. I mean, I don't usually, but him with the coffee. Um, we'll take these into a restaurant, and they'll give a refill in, yes. in his cup. So I've taken um, this one into fast, fast food places, you know, while traveling and so on. Would you mind putting my coffee in there? You know? And uh, then they have to... Uh, if the coffee is held behind the counter, then there's health department issues and so on. But they always find a way around it. You know, either bring it near to me, here you help yourself, kind of thing, whatever. So they're actually very happy not to lose their styrofoam cups to somebody it's a, like me. It's an additional cost. Yeah, it so costs it, them money. It saves yeah. them money for you to bring your own cup. Yeah. So get a really great cup. And see, now this is an example of. Um, yeah. This is the opposite of disposability. We bought these beautiful things when we were at a tiny house festival, and we've used them ever since. Every single day. Every, yeah. Literally. This one at least yeah. twice, and this one at least once. Yeah. No? I'll find it somewhere with cold tea in it, like right now. <laughs> but I usually get a, a swig or two before it gets cold. But I think this is just a, another example of how in a world where this deliberate obsolescence and throwaway culture, that we really can make some beautiful choices that are fun to use. Yes. They're beautiful to look at. And they are intended to be with us just as long as they possibly can because they're genuinely beautiful. And um, and it's inspiring. You know, it's wonderful to hold the cup and, and drink about uh, of it. And think about it and look at the pattern. There, there, <laughs> there's no. He actually wrote an email to the, the artist lady who made these and told her all of the fine points about why it was the perfect mug. So, <laughs> so it doesn't surprise me that this is. <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> find. I mean, of... I've, I've, been, I've been drinking since I popped out, so to speak, you know? Since you popped out. <laughs> That's right, you know? And, and it took. What over fifty years to find? This actually does everything, you know. <laughs> it does everything. Yeah. No uh, drinking and driving. That's right. <laughs> not why I'm on the wheel. Why are you on the wheel? <laughs> you have to know to get off. Ah! <laughs> yeah, you're about to get pulled over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. The well, last time. Speaking of rabbit trails, the last time we got pulled over, somebody had just flown past us like crazy. <laughs> and the, the cop pulls us over. And <laughs> that was funny. This Sorry. is off topic. So off topic. But he's like, I just saw you go past me at 90 miles an hour up the hill. And I looked at the, and I leaned over across him and looked at the officer and said, in this car. <laughs> In we were, this car, because we and were the in officer. a 1974 Opal Manta, yeah. and there's no way it's going to go past anybody at 90. <laughs> so we all had a good laugh, and the officer went off to find the guy who'd actually yeah. passed him. <laughs> in this car, <laughs> that was so funny. And the officer, well, and that's I actually an unintentionally <laughs> a really great example. We started out talking about frugal living and. Um, <laughs> this wasteful culture that we've developed, but I, would, I just, we just made reference to a car that was built in 74. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things that is part of our wasteful culture is that the deliberate obsolescence of vehicles, 
they are barely made to last 10 years. And they are literally made so that if you tap somebody in the, in the parking lot by accident, your uh, airbag goes off and that totals the car. And so they are deliberately made, yes, with safety features, but also the safety features that will total the vehicle just like that. And um, so one of the things that we've done, partially because we really love old cars, <laughs> is that we drive these vehicles and there's no greener vehicle than the 50 year old car that's in our front yard right now. Um, or the... And still gets 28 miles to the gallon. Yeah. And it starts up, you can let it, you can forget about it, let it sit for four months, go in there, pull the choke, Tap the accelerator. Doo -doo 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 -boom. And it still comes back to life. Yes. It still comes, and it's yeah. so simple. So I guess what I'm saying is that it's a it's a good idea to really challenge when culture says just throw it away and get a new one. It's a good idea to really give some thought to that process yeah. and maybe don't throw it away. Maybe fix the one thing that's wrong with it, or maybe look for the one thing that you plan to have for as long as it will possibly last and use that intentionally instead of a disposable item yeah, think, um, yeah, yeah like with cars think about I, i've heard it so many times you know i really love the car you're driving i could never do that because of the image that i have be, being a, a business owner or whatever i have to portray success and, and whatever to my clients and so on but okay so so they're buying a truck for 40 fifty thousand dollars you can get a really cool resto mod for that money yeah. you know have it done your way if you have the money okay if you have the money if you want a style yes and on top of vintage. it you know in comparison the new truck that you buy or whatever the 40 fifty thousand dollar thing you know two years down the road is less than half the value your thing you can sell it for the same price or more i mean it you retain <laughs> the value so here's a question. The statistic is that each American throws away 2,555 pounds of trash wow. per year, which you immediately said. That's the weight of my car. So I'm assuming that the car is not included in that. That's right. <laughs> so they wouldn't pick it up. I parked it outside motor. many times. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think the number is really encompassing all of what it means to live in a disposable culture because our our modern vehicles are made to be um deliberately obsolete and they're made to be in some ways disposable so that if you uh, hit something at 45 and your airbag goes off then it totals the car but maybe you can replace the bumper and this part and that part and that part and um you know what would our culture look like if we were driving vehicles that you intended to buy that vehicle once and have it for your life? I mean, what would our culture look like if you were buying a house and you intended to live in it for life? Yes. Now, I realize that's not the world we live in. Um, but how would things be different if we really did buy something that you intended to keep as long as you possibly could? I, d I just think it would be I just think it would be a different culture, would be a different world. And how, if that's the world we want, um, then what what are we going to do about it? How will you know? it? How would this? Uh, how would these life choices impact your children, the future generation? You know, in regards to uh, resources available for education, how does it impact the older generation with resources available for healthcare? Mm. You know. In, instead of resources pouring into the street and then being sucked up into the landfill, yeah. Yeah. you know, this is well, unbelievable. I mean, yeah. I mean, again, I'm referring to statistics. Where is the one that kind of blew me away? Um, wow. More than a quarter of Americans are shopping online once a week. <laughs> that is a lot of online shopping. I realize yeah. how judgmental this sounds, but where does all that stuff go when it comes home? Where does the it's, stuff go that this stuff replaces? You know? Yeah. Well, and in order to keep up that kind of cycle once yeah. a week, I mean, 
either it's making the house really, really full of stuff that nobody really actually wants, or it's, um, or it's all going pretty much straight to the mm -hmm. landfill with one little minutia moment at the house, you know? I mean, how many, it's really kind of intriguing. How many people have you come across, let's say within the last year, but well, no, no, forget about last year. How many people have you come across this springtime that pulled out their lawnmower from last year, couldn't get it started, and put it up front at the curb to have it collected from the major trash guys? You know, instead well, actually, of... the reason why that comes to mind is because the guy who lives next door to us goes around and collects metal for, and he takes it to recycling to get a couple of bucks here and there. Yeah. And so there is a steady pro progression of trash right past our house. I mean, literally yeah. in, the, in the yard right next to our driveway. And it's pretty amazing yeah. what's in that it's, thing. It's I mean, impressive. he was talking about that mower was, <laughs> he's pointing at stuff and saying that yeah. was a lot of money when it was new. Yes, I, I remember, yeah, just a couple of weeks ago, I, I, I saw uh, uh, a um, one of those electric lawn mowers. Uh, that I know came just out last year in the summer, you know, huh? You know, and, and the, more than one of them is already being thrown away. Yeah, and it looked beautiful. I mean, but, if, 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 but you know, you have to plug it in. No, <laughs> no, that's know. not it. But I don't know why you know, it was thrown. I don't know why it was at the curb. But I mean, uh, ask my wife. I cannot rescue everything. <laughs> <laughs> Although we do sometimes try. <laughs> yeah. so, but I, I but make Tom suggestions. Right. Save you know, your scraps. You know? Save your scraps. Yeah. yeah. Bicycles. You know, bicycles. You know, like once he had a racing bike on the back of his pickup truck, you know, a European made r racing bike. I said, wow, you know, if you put this on the internet, blah, 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 you can easily get 100 bucks for it, you know. And he just turned to me and said, it needs tires. You're, you're throwing a bicycle away, uh, you know, a racing bike, European made racing bike, because it needs tires. <laughs> so we can do with a little cultural mind shift. Sorry. Mind shift? shift Is that mind. the word? Shift mind? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Shifts and the minds and schnitz and the puts and the whoops. We could use a little cultural reset and maybe um, this is a perfect time to uh, look around the house and think about um, what we don't need and get rid of that. Actually, something really challenging I saw recently was a guy saying, you know, it's the principle of just one having one. Now, I'm pretty sure he's not. He's not including pencils. He doesn't mean colored pencils. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> there are exceptions to that. No, rule. but he. he you genuinely only need one. And then immediately on the screen is this little handful of pins. Um, yeah. I genuinely need one. And I'm and I was, I was very immediately challenged by that. Yeah. I mean, if we have just one of something, then it's more likely to be a better quality one and to be something that we actually take care of in a whole different way. Um, yeah. And this is a guy who has one ball cap and wears a t-shirt and I don't know what kind of pants all the time. I mean, he's got a uniform. He's a pretty hardcore minimalist. And so um, even as minimalist as we are, and I don't really, <laughs> even though we've lived in a tiny house of 125 square feet, I don't consider myself a genuine minimalist. I mean, we we are in some ways. I mean, we're down to two coffee mugs and that's I think great. We, I think we are but, aware. But that did make us aware. I yeah. mean, I don't know that 2,555 pounds of trash come through here. Yeah. I, I hope that's not true because yeah. that's pretty mind boggling. Yeah. And we are thinking of ways of uh, reducing things. I mean, already since, gosh, since winter time or so, you know, we're, we're looking, we like to recycle things. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> well, anyway, last year, uh, end of last year or so, the city prided itself uh, for some time that they collect all kinds of recycling, inclusive of plastics and so on. Last year, end of last year, whatever, it stopped. Yeah. So why do you stop collecting plastics? Because well, it wasn't actually being recycled correct. anyway. It was shipped off to China and China doesn't want it anymore. 
excuse me, you know, excuse me, you you pride yourself of recycling and then you burn oil to bring crap across the ocean. Ah, schnitzel, you know? And so so I was already since then, Carmen and I, I mean Carmen was actually quite sincere and and and, and is in this regard. We are wrecking our brains and thinking about a way of making a little machine that allows uh, not just us, but anybody who does something similar to shred, clean, shred, and remelt plastic crap that you collect and shape it into it's something useful. <laughs> yes, into something useful, even if it's, I don't know, a landscaping brick or something, yeah. you know? But let's make something out of it, or let's make it so that the two bags of plastic schnitzel can be actually reduced into yeah the size of one little brick that's it so if you want plastic for something here it is so it doesn't end up in the landfill yeah so we are thinking about this and also here we've got trash collection once a week in the city and it just dawned on me it just dawned on me over the winter that i'm putting trash out only once a month because we are careful, not just not what we buy, but how we buy things. How is it packaged? What are we dragging back into our little nest? You know, is it what are we hoarding? No, I mean besides colored pencils and yarn. No, the, the food <laughs> items. The food. How are they packaged? How right. do we get them? You know, and, and therefore, how much trash? How much can we actually use, ingest, and live off? And how much goes into the trash? And uh, and living in a tiny house where it matters how much trash you generate because where you <laughs> put where it, you, put you know. It. And uh, we literally didn't have a trash can. We we kept a little bag by the door. Our so. mind was, in a most gentle way, I would say, reconditioned. Yeah, you know, very much so. You know? And so that's what we're trying to share. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the renewing of your mind. Yeah. And it renewing that just my, doesn't, process. Yes, and it doesn't mean just changing from this to that direction, but it means the renewing of your mind also means refreshing, mm -hmm. you know, new life. Better, which is know? good for the earth and which is good in a pandemic. So, um, yeah, just good yeah. for your neighbor, good mm -hmm. for your city, good for your younger generation. No. Good for the earth. Good for the oil. Good woody oi. So do you think frugal living will make a comeback because of COVID? Is that a question to everybody in this dog? Well, since the dog's probably not going to be very concise about that, yeah. <laughs> and you're here. Dog is do very think, frugal. Yeah, she's frugal. Do you think frugal living will make a comeback? Or yes. do you think there will be this reaction that once we're out, we'll be like, ah! I can buy anything I want. Let's go crazy. I think because it's not just like our beloved president may live forever, has hoped it's just a quick passing event. We'll be done. Uh, because it is an event that will, you know, scramble the eggs for 2020 and, and most probably have percussions into next year and, and beyond that. I think it will change the way we live, we do things, you know. I mean, already our neighbor, he's collecting stuff you know recycling i can use i, I can get a few cents for this a few cents for that and you know he already uh collects what other people throw away and and funny enough just around the corner on another block there's another guy who does the same thing so it's uh they're collecting metal yes mm -hmm. you know so um well let me say yes. what i hope happens yeah and that is that when we realize that we that the virus has allowed us to be home more. And, you know, if you're home all the time anyway, this probably hasn't been a big change. But if you have been working a job that you didn't like and you have been loving being home more, um, one of the things that I hope that we start to think about or that we think about more intently is that if we don't buy, I mean, like the statistic says, 25, more than 25% of Americans are buying something online once a week. If we didn't have to have the income to support that habit, we would have the ability to be at home more, to um, engage in our favorite activities more, 
maybe we could, if we wanted to be home more and were willing to augment our behavior a little bit in terms of not buying something every week on uh, Amazon or wherever, um, maybe that would make it possible to work fewer hours at that job that you hate. And maybe that would um, make it possible to live more of the life that you want to live versus the life you feel trapped into because of, of the um, disposable nature of culture. Because when we buy into the disposability of everything, um, we lose our ability to make those choices ourselves. But once we get intentional about it and start taking back our lives from the prescription that culture gives us, mm -hmm. it gives us the opportunity to go to work less because maybe we don't need to buy something on Amazon every week. Maybe we can start to interrupt the cycle and live a life that's more intentional and more content. Because I think the most important point that you're bringing home, home at least to me, <clears throat> is that everything around us to a certain degree is renewable or replaceable, disposable, and so on to a certain degree. But our individual time on yeah. Earth so is good. not it is not a resource. It's not disposable. Resource. It's it, done. This is your resource. It's gone. This day is your resource. Mm -hmm. You know, next week, by God's grace, is your resource. Mm -hmm. How do you spend it? Do you want you to know? spend this minute's energy yes. on making the money to buy a disposable item that's going to be gone like that so that you have to do it again and again and again? Or do you want to be able to take a breath and instead of having that spending habit call it all back in to a more intentional way of living yes and see it's only a sacrifice mm -hmm. as you look at it from the front end if you look back on a sacrifice it's never a sacrifice because you see it from what you gained like yes. we went into living in a tiny house thinking it would be <clears throat> a sacrificial experience but looking back on it i think it's one of the best decisions we ever made what do you think well, we would have worked ourselves to the bone in the yeah. uh, in the place where we were before without yeah. Carmen seeing me or me seeing her, not you know, worth it. and just we would just happen to crash at the same place. Yeah. That's it, you yeah. know. So it's only ever a sacrifice when you're looking at it in yeah. the future, but when you look back at it, you see what you gained out of it. And so anytime we start talking about living in a disposable culture where everything's disposable things are planned to be obsolete immediately um, the new cell phone is coming out you know boom 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 yeah. and as soon as you got that one in your hand guess what it's obsolete um, how do we step out of that cycle in order to make it possible to spend more time with the people we love doing the work we love having the life that we intend not the life that culture expects us to to live in terms of just being a consumer um, how do we get intentional about it? Yeah. And I, I think the, the virus offers us this amazing opportunity to simply stop and think for a minute. And that's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. So my, my question was, do you think Americans will become more frugal as a result of this? And my answer to myself is I hope, I really hope, because when we can step out of that cycle, we can set ourselves free. And that's huge because Look, we've got limited resources. Like he so eloquently said, time is our big, very not infinite <laughs> resource. I mean, this moment is just now gone, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it really matters when you get to be an, a person with some some wisdom showing, yeah, some, teeth. <laughs> some wisdom showing <laughs> that you'd be able to look back on what, what it was you were really intentional about. If it's an accomplishment, okay, get that thing done. If it's a relationship, okay, spend time with that person that matters to you. Um, be intentional about those decisions because culture just says, spend money, spend money, get more, you know, help yourself. You deserve it. But... Even just to understand yourself <laughs> better. Yeah. You know, to understand your own creativity, your own character, your own gifts, your own what talents. Matters. Yeah. Your you know? God-given gifts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there's even now when you're sort of let's say laid off from your job and you're worried about the income and how I'm going to make all this and 
and it and these pressures are coming in but it also allows you to think okay what i've done the last 6 10 15 20 years was that my job to keep all this card house up and going or is it my vocation you know and my calling mm -hmm. and it's perfectly fine to come to the point saying I want my job back because yes, this is where I belong. Yes. This is important. Yes. And I spent my last 15 years in the right spot and I helped the right people and contributed to that company or whatever. Yes. That's cool. Mm -hmm. You know, that's cool. So therefore but not everybody has that. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. So therefore, don't be afraid of examining yourself and come to the conclusion. Yes, I am on the right track and I'm just now going to shape it to make it yeah. better yeah you know you can be on the right path yes and like basketball you can you can make a slight pivot when you need to yeah this there's nothing wrong with oh i'm going this way oh whoops that wasn't quite where i intended to go plant that foot and baby turn yeah go where you intend to go don't yeah. let it be haphazard don't let life happen to you think about it where do you want to go baby pivot <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pivot. pivot, baby. Pivot, baby. Pivot. <laughs> We're amusing ourselves now. Well, we have been talking for some time. Really? We've we've kind of <laughs> we have really covered a lot. Just, I mean, it's funny to me how we we started this conversation about talking about. Um, thriftiness and disposable things and waste culture um but we ended up thinking of a lot of things just as we were rolling here that i had not considered going into this conversation so that's kind of fun how that happens yeah i hadn't realized how much of a part of american culture that waste culture is and it's pretty eye-opening but it's it, yeah Unfortunately, it is everywhere. Yeah. You know, it is. I, I, it is everywhere. I remember. Uh, yeah, I remember years ago reading about the history of the Volkswagen. Okay, already in 1932, they were discussing. You know, don't make that car to last longer than five years, because we want to sell another. Oh wow! You know, uh, <laughs> that was in 1932. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so the modern age had started even back then. The yeah, well, age uh, of disposability. Yeah. yeah, and funny enough, well, yeah. Um, it's amazing those things lasted. I mean, yeah, a few, <laughs> a few versions here and there. So, but yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. Time. Time is your one resource. Yeah. What are you gonna do with it? And you know? that's where we'll leave it, because that's the main question. And I love you. And I love you. That's the main answer. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I think we may end up putting some bits and pieces of this on YouTube, so watch for that if you missed it. Don't and break wanna, my cup. I want to see it. Cheers. It's the best coffee mug ever. Yeah. Thanks for watching. You can follow me on Instagram at Carmen Rose Shank. You can subscribe to my channel on YouTube, please do. And you can download us on iTunes. The music is composed by William Kirkpatrick, lyrics by Louise Estead, arranged and performed by classical guitarist Jonathan Crispin. Show notes available at CarmenShank.com.